Ah, Mables amigos, welcome back to another episode of the Club Lucha Podcast. It's me, Foos, alongside Floke and Seuss. Yo. Oh, yo. Hello. And today we have a very packed episode for you guys. Um, we've been missing the past few weeks. Life happens, of course. Uh, I think you guys are used to it by now. But we had to come back. Absolutely had to come back because we have a, a very major show happened yesterday. The biggest show of the year for a promotion. And, of course, we have to talk about it, give you our thoughts, and whether or not you should be on the lookout for this one when it goes on YouTube for free. I didn't watch. I didn't watch. <laughs> Floke <laughs> did not watch. And we're going to tell you why later. He has a very good reason for not watching. But Soups and I did watch. Of course, we're talking about Triple Mania 2024, Ciudad de Mexico. The biggest show, the biggest Triple Mania, the last of the three. The one where, you know, many things were supposed to happen. Some things happened and then some things we wish didn't happen at all. Who soups? You want to give, uh, I guess your your initial thoughts on it before we get real deep into it. Okay, I'll just give a a very brief and broad uh, review of the show. Um, I think as a whole, the the show was pretty bad. Um, there were some entertaining parts. Um, the Copa Bardal was a lot of fun. Somehow the Vampiro match was fun at points, but most of those kind of just relied on nostalgia a lot and uh, a lot of so bad it's good kind of stuff. But a lot of the show was so bad it's bad and I want to stop watching. <laughs> I I agree with a lot of what you said there. And this is just my initial first thoughts. We're going to get really, I mean, maybe not ultra deep in it, but we're definitely going to talk about each match Um at least a bit, give our thoughts on what happened and stuff like that. But like you said, overall, um, I think one of the best ways to describe this show is that there were a lot of dudes rock moments. Like there were a lot of moments that made me say, oh man, that's pretty cool. You know, like, but then um, when you look at it in like the broader, the whole picture, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You just kind of feel like, oh, well, you know, like this company is worse than IWRG. <laughs> yeah, like there are moments where I just like, and I'm going to talk about like, we're going to talk about specifically what moment uh, this was for each of us. Cause like we both have shared a, center, a, a similar sentiment where we were going, we were watching it and we really did. I mean, we're not, we're not going to be hating on this entire thing. We're not going to, that's not what we do, honestly. Like we, we're not just going to, blindly trash for agenda or you know some people would do for heat on on their podcast um <laughs> but we're just talking about it um our genuine feelings and like we said there's a lot that that we enjoyed and there's a lot that we liked but there's moments for for both me and Sue where we said oh like it's not it's not gonna get better this is mm -hmm. they they haven't Rush. really yeah they haven't really improved it's like they, they threw another coat of paint on it, but they haven't changed anything. So I guess it's we like could... that saying, like they move one step forward, but they move two steps back instead. They move half a step forward and they move 30 steps back. That's yes. That's actually a great way to describe yeah. that. The first match um, was on the pre-show, which by the way, before we even <laughs> start, we have to talk about how Shout we even the watch the show. Shout out, bro. Shout out to Triller. And Lucha Libre Triple A, bro. They played the entire show for free on the pre-show link. They never cut the pre-show link off, so the stream was just Triple Mania the entire way through. Like, yeah, we legally watched it for free. Exactly. Nobody, nobody ever turned it off. Yeah. Um, there was no need to pay for it because they just didn't make us pay for it. It was just free. Like they just kept playing it on the pre-show stream for some reason. Thank you, uh, Conan. Yeah, and a lot of people pointed. No, the, you know the coolest thing about it was nobody pointed it out online until after the show ended because that's yeah. what everybody was doing. They were mentioning Conan on Twitter, being like, "Hey, thanks for the free show, man." <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. We were all like, we literally said, "Don't, don't talk." Like nobody, nobody could say it because like 
no once they realize it. Yeah. No, exactly. And I think even up until this morning, it was still up. But um, <laughs> I just went and checked on Triller right now, and, and they cut it off 30 minutes uh, into the yeah. show. So, But on that pre-show, uh, that first match, Soups, tell us about that. Yeah, so Lady Flamair and Fabio Pache, I think, uh, like, as a wrestling match, probably the match of the night or close to it. I thought it was pretty good for the most part. And then we just got, oh, man, uh, a classic AAA finish. <laughs> um, and, yeah, Fabi loses. And, uh, Foos, I think we were talking just before we recorded. This is Lady Flamair's second match for this title she beat taya for it last year and then she's now defending it for the first time that is that sounds yes correct um there's aye, aye, aye. only two matches recorded i see on cage match i don't think she's defended like on triple e tv she didn't defend on uh like any of the past triple manias did she she didn't do anything on she was with, she was doing tna she was in the tna yeah, match the, for Tijuana, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. she was nothing for the championship, nothing for the top women's title. They get once a year, uh, once in twenty twenty four, and once in twenty twenty three, and that yeah, was really that's it. Insane. I've seen her defend it uh, in Vancouver once, and she's defended it in Mexico once, apparently. So, good stuff. Yeah. Um, I agree. What you said, though, like. Uh, the match itself, I, I missed it last night, so I had to watch it um, right before we started this. I watched the match, and um, it was good. And like, It ends in classic AAA fashion. Um, Tirantes, uh, the hater of Fabio Pache, the referee who specifically hates Fabio Pache, which I'm going to be honest, if if I'm owning a promotion, dog, I, you know, I want him to call it down the middle. I don't know why we're, <laughs> we're hiring a guy. I don't know why we're keeping this guy around. <laughs> he keeps... He has these specific grudges. At, at the minimum, I'm barring him from the building until her match is over, you know. <laughs> but um, he comes out and uh, he messes with Fabi and then Karen Jarrett from the crowd, masked. Um, she helps beat up on Fabi too as revenge for um, Fabi interfering in the Jeff Jarrett shenanigans in the the prior triple manias so strong start strong start there at the end uh to finish that match a tone setter really yeah which is like which is honestly like the perfect tone setter if you think about it because it's like yeah uh -huh. there's there's good wrestling here or there can be the potential for good wrestling exists but but then you book a finish like that and it's like oh yeah tripping over their own shoes <laughs> Every, anything for the heat, brother. Anything for the heat. Anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After that, we had um, Copa Bardal, which you mentioned a bit earlier. Uh, you said it had you had some good moments for you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, primarily uh, in the Discord call, going crazy when <laughs> Marco Corleone shows up, uh, looking goddamn incredible. Yes. Um, but just a lot of uh, a lot of good nostalgia pops exactly what this match needed to be um a lot of fun um and then a deserving person actually winning it in octagon jr so yeah yeah um, but i gotta say um i still don't think pimpinella's uh shoulders were <laughs> all the way down so we gotta that's under review right now she's still in it she's still in it she's still playing <laughs> I think Octagon Jr. won a, a title shot. I think they said he won a title shot for any belt that he wants. And um, he's the Latin American champion right now, I think, right? He yeah. Is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Okay. He, okay. He's held that belt 274 days. Um, How many times has he defended? <laughs> I can tell you right now. Octagon Jr. has defended this belt, surprisingly, a very many times. Uh, he beat QT Marshall um, November 19th, <laughs> yeah. 2023. Horrible. He he defended against Aramis and Mecha Wolf in uh, December 2023. Then he defended against Mecha Wolf, defended against Kempo Jr. I think this is like a spot show. Defended against uh, 
Australian Suicide, Balsergor, Dinamic, Dinamico, and Taurus in May. Defended again in June. Defended again twice in uh, August, earlier this month. So, he's actually been defending. Wow. Good. Yeah, I mean, Octagon Jr., shining shining spot, I think. I think he's <laughs> He's deserving, but... Like you said, this match, you know what, what made me think, uh, what, what comparison I draw with this match, and this is, might make some people mad, but those type of people don't really listen to this podcast. Um, it kind of reminded me, it was almost like a, like a WrestleMania of this year type of thing where we're getting like run-ins and entrances and like, you know, nostalgia kind of feeling with like, you know, your John Cena's and, and The Rock coming back and then The Undertaker showing up and all that stuff in the Roman Cody match. But like on a smaller scale, I guess, and more localized regionally to yeah, yeah, people Way who watched <laughs> yeah, people who watched Triple uh, A in like the two thousands. Kenzo Suzuki showed up, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, I, I, should, I heard about that. Uh, you should fill Floak in on the uh, the biggest uh, CMLL Triple A news that happened during this match. Oh my I god, saw, you saw that? I I saw that on Twitter. Yeah, I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw. Micro Gemelos Diablo, uh, they uh, sneaked through the back door and uh, decided to join Triple A. I guess absolutely. Getting, you know, I guess getting their, uh, you know, getting outshined by Kemalito. You know, <laughs> that's also that means that the uh, CML World Micros title is vacant now. <laughs> insanity, insanity. So the the whole reason they even showed up was one of the one of the entrants was Mascarita Sagrada, and. Um, it ended up being that was Mascarita Dorada. Like it was the, the second. The Mascarita. real one. Yeah. yeah. Um, he posted on his Instagram uh, about it, like him in the gear. And um, when he got eliminated, which he got eliminated by like Zumbido, right? Do you remember who eliminated him? I think so, yeah. Um, when he got eliminated, when he was walking to the back, <laughs> um, he got attacked by two other minis. And first off, the camera missed most of it. Like, we didn't even see the beginning of the attack. We just kind of saw him. Classic AAA. <laughs> yeah, we just kind of saw him get beat up as he was walking back. And then people, like, started realizing, oh, like, they no-showed at Arena Coliseo. They were booked that night for CMLL. No-showed, jumped to AAA. What are, your thought- what are you guys' thoughts on that? What do you feel about that? Okay. Like we were talking yesterday, like, they don't really use their micros very much in triple a's <laughs> and they they use them a decent amount in cmll and it seemed like they were in a program with camelito and like there were some uh some money to be made there but maybe that's not how they want to make their money i guess what do you think Plug? um i mean good for them i mean if it, if it's gonna get them more pay cool for them i guess uh Triple A is definitely, you know, they'll say they'll do a Micros or Minis division, but, you know, you know damn well they're not going to do that. And, well, you know, I guess the the Micros division is down to, like, what, three, four people in CML, so yeah. it is what it is. I Tengu, Kemalito, yeah, Chamuel, Mije. Uh, who's that other? Who's the other one? The one that does, like, Chavo del Ocho. <laughs> um... Atomo? Is that what is that? Atomo, baby. <laughs> I think that's what his yeah, I think that's what his name is. I think it's Atomo. Not many not many guys there, but yeah, no, I mean my opinion on this is like similar to y'all's like Can Malito piss you off that much, man? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a little guy. He's a little dude. He's just he's nine years old. <laughs> you know? He's, <laughs> what's he gonna like I'm, that would like and then I think they'd been serving that suspension too. I saw Rob Viper mention um when they got suspended because you remember that show when they like stormed off at the end? Yeah. They served that suspension, they came back for one match, and then they were like, Let's go to three play out. Like I don't know, man. That's rough. I wonder if that's the I wonder if that's the big the big uh uh CML <laughs> wrestlers that Latin Lower was saying we're hopping over to three play <laughs> I guess. And the thing is, like, they're both pretty good wrestlers, especially. I mean, they're both pretty good micros, and like, that just sucks, dude. That just sucks. This Very is like, strange. Yeah, this is like, uh, 
I mean, this is about the level of CM Punk jumping over back to WWE from AEW, oh. storming out. He's <laughs> <laughs> not here to make friends, here to make money. This is Brawl Out Mexico. Oh, man. Um, some other notable names that showed up in this battle royal, because it was very nostalgia, retro, like... I liked I liked it for the most part, like you, um, like you said, nostalgia pops, feelings of youth, childhood, seeing these people come back. Um, Pimpinella, even though Pimpinella won one of these already. <laughs> yeah, she wins like I swear at least every other. <laughs> <laughs> um, Charlie Manson, he came out. El Elegido came out. Um, Estrellita was there. El Guapito was there, bro. I was like Guapito. Um, Heavy Metal, Jesse Queen, Kenzo Suzuki. Kenzo Suzuki looked ecstatic to be there. Um, La Hiedra, Marco Colleone. Marco Colleone, like for me, for us in, in the Discord, biggest pop of the night. Like, Oh, my God. Didn't hit a drop kick, though. Did uh, not. It's worth noting. So putting him on, uh, on notice here a little bit. Don't know if he has it anymore. We're going to need to see it. If he's still yep. got it, we're going to need to see it. Um, Mascarita Sagrada, Microman, Mr. Iguana, Nino Hamburguesa, and Zumbido. Uh, that was all our participants. And Octagon Jr. outlasted and uh, won the match. Which, again, for me, this was one of the higher points of the show. Um, I mean, the booking made sense, at least, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Perfect placement. Get everybody warmed up a little bit. Yeah, got all the nostalgia pops out really early too. Like, got some later though too. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> unexpected ones. Um, after this match, we had the Triple A World Tag Team Title Three Way Match, which was, which we we talked about, was not really worked like three tag teams. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a. Uh, Raj Desi, formerly known as Jinder Mahal, and Satnam Singh with Jeff Jarrett um, against Negro Casas and Psycho Cloud, who were the champions, and against Dr. Wagner Jr. and Galeno del Mar. What'd you think about this one, Soups? I thought this was pretty good for the most part. I thought we got some really strong moments. Uh, This is, I think... This is the best I've ever seen Satnam Singh work, which (laughs) isn't the highest bar to clear, but he cleared it. So shout out to him, I guess. Um, Yeah, it was it had fun dynamics at a time. Um, Like we were saying earlier, not really a two versus two versus two. It's more of a two versus two versus three. And then at some points of four versus three. (laughs) uh, Interesting stuff. it lost uh, a lot of goodwill when uh, Raj Desi and Satnam Singh ended up winning the match, but not not too crazy of a decision, I guess. Um, I didn't see Wagner Jr. and Gaino winning. It uh, would have been a little weird, I guess, but we move on from there. It was decent. It was decent. Um Negro Casas, I like how he would take like the one punch and then just like like the flat back bumps. I like that. <laughs> um, I really liked when Sutton saying, I don't remember who he had down on the ground, bro, but he wrapped his giant damn hand around their neck. Oh, a psycho clown. He was killing psycho yeah. clown. <laughs> bro, and he was just like <laughs> doing like those short like choke slams, like yeah. down on one knee, bro. Dribbling them, yeah. That was beast. I was like, that was Dude. awesome. There was that one moment, I think it was just before that, where they were they were working a little bit and they got uh Satnam over the top rope and Psycho Clown's going to hit a tope. And he just bounces off of him. Oh my uh That was beast. That was like that that Laredo kid spot they did in uh <laughs> Tijuana, you know. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you said though, like it, it, you know, not maybe I, I wouldn't put the belts on Raj Desi and Sundam Singh, but of all the offensive booking decisions, maybe the least offensive offensive one, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, they they weren't like the thing was like they weren't like completely awful or anything, you know? No, no. They uh, clearly 
uh, Raj and Satnam, like they looked like they belonged at least. So, like they were uh, keeping up and everything, and you know they were, were at least made to look interesting. You know, Satnam just being a big beast and uh, Raj being like a the powerhouse kind of guy. You know. Yeah, I feel like not a lot was made about uh, the two other teams working together a lot because they'd kind of been feuding through these other triple manias. But, I mean, it wouldn't be AAA if they weren't just throwing storylines <laughs> to the side. <laughs> um, I like Psycho Clown's uh, flamethrower guitar. That was awesome. That was sick, yeah. yeah. That was really cool. Um, i trying to think of any other big moments and i'm kind of drawing a blank after that the, the i think the issue a lot i mean on the issue with a lot of these matches is like like we said cool moments but then like maybe lacking like the meat and potatoes um yeah yeah not a lot of substance between the big moments yeah so this one is not the worst on it's not the worst on the card for sure but i think maybe a step down from that go about that mm-hmm um fourth triple a world cruiserweight cruiserweight title <laughs> the champ commander against laredo kid and matt riddle and you know just take a guess Flo. if you know who who do you think won? you probably already know because you saw it i i, I know yeah <laughs> what do you uh, think about that what do you think about that result Flo? i want to hear from you Promise company on earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you think, so What did you think about this entire this entire match? So, uh, like you were saying earlier, we kind of had our moments where we were like, "Uh oh, like this this is kind of uh, kind of shit now." And uh, this match wasn't bad. This uh, this in the uh, Reign of the Reinas match was probably the the top two in terms of like in-ring quality but matt riddle winning this match is just like bouncing my head off the wall in confusion (laughs) um i have no idea like like you said you put emphasis on the word cruiserweight like i don't even think this guy was cruiserweight when he had to cut weight for like ufc like i don't even think he would have fallen in that weight class (laughs) But big. yeah, not a not a bad match though. Um, especially with uh, Commander and Laredo Kid, um, when they were working together, I thought there was some really good stuff there. Riddle wasn't terrible, terrible person. Not a not a bad wrestler in this case here, but yeah, absolutely baffling. Like I would have rather had like I could watch Raj Desi and Satnam Singh <laughs> hold those titles for like three years rather than see Matt Riddle win this. Yeah, just kind of a weird, like weird, weird decision, you know? Like, all right, man. Like of all the guys, like Larry the Kid should have won this. That would have been the the feel good, like correct decision. He didn't even need to. And the thing was maybe. Maybe the way this was booked like this was maybe, well, who took the pin? Do you remember who took the pin? The commander uh, took the pin. Commander, commander went to hit his rope walk uh, shooter. Matt Riddle hit him with the RKO, uh, and then it, whatever his finish is. Oh my god! Let I look. He didn't get pinned. Yeah, yeah, he was oh, good. Finally, he was about to if commander would have hit his move, but <laughs> um, the thing is like. In that case, just have Laredo Kid pin him then. If Matt Riddle doesn't want to eat a pin, don't make Matt Riddle eat the pin, but just have Laredo yeah. Kid win it. And then the chairs, yeah. they came out with these oh, chairs. And they sat them in the <laughs> ring and they just looked at each other. Like they sat down in the ring in the chairs and just kind of looked at each other. Oh, and, my God. And then the chairs were never used again. Like they just were not like, using the match. <laughs> they made a whole deal about getting these chairs from somewhere. Like Commander came out and someone like, handed him a chair from the crowd and i'm like oh shit they're gonna like beat the hell out of each other yeah like you said they just sat in them for five seconds and then got rid of them oh my god also just to go back um because i looked it up because i I got curious about where what weight division matt riddle did fight in he did fight at welterweight was that 185 
welterweight once no middleweight middleweight's 185 welterweight's 170 oh, okay. 170 okay yeah so he's like he's easily walking around over two bills now yeah I mean, he might make it in weight but like he was never i mean in the wwe was he ever booked in a cruiserweight match like once oh no i don't think so never went on 205 live he challenged for the heavyweight title didn't he yeah yep he's like a big guy so like i don't know I guess maybe while technically he could fit the cruiserweight definition. Well, no, he it says he's 216. Cruiserweight is 205. So, I don't know. <laughs> Still don't feel great yeah. about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Conan cooked the weight there. He, he slid the scales a little bit. Just like he did with Alberto. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just... um. I feel like that little kid, bro. He's so awesome, bro. Like, I yeah, feel like yeah. I'm a proud that little kid, Mark, bro. I'm a I'm a proud that little kid enjoyer, bro. Like this guy is so cool, and Matt Riddle went over. Like, is Matt Riddle even gonna show back up? Like, when's the next time he's gonna come back? Um, who knows? Yeah, cause he, I know he won when he won the uh, the New Japan TV title, and then he got in trouble and then dropped it in the states so i mean not the greatest guy to put your title on but i don't think they care too much no conan doesn't kind of doesn't care at all honestly not about this big name big ex wwe name um put a belt on him i see where that goes i guess um yeah. yeah i mean other than that like you said in the ring it was pretty cool you know just kind yeah. of a a baffling booking decision there at the end. Do you remember when uh, Commander uh, landed on Matt Riddle's face like crazy? Yeah, that was great. I love that part. <laughs> that was my favorite part of the match. <laughs> that was beast. I thought he was cooked. I thought it was over him, but dude's got a strong face, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, after this, um, the match many people were looking forward to, of course, Vampiro's cinematic um retirement match which he's not retiring from wrestling this match did not serve as like a retirement for wrestling it didn't he already serve. has he already has booking dates after <laughs> yeah. after yesterday that's kind of real on it if we're being real he's not even retired from mexico city he was just retired from that specific arena <laughs> awesome he's just that's, retired what, that's from... wrestling <laughs> <laughs> that's a real worker dude like and the thing about this one i don't think i can really hate on this one too much um it's a retirement match. Nostalgia pops. Uh, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's you were never supposed to be watching this match with a critical eye of of professional wrestling or lucha libre. Like this is the perfect turn your brain off and just let it let it happen basically. And it was like 12 guys um cuz it, it was almost like a gauntlet, you know? Like a gauntlet where everybody, the structure of match, the structure of the match was essentially this, right? Um, cinematic moment where they show a hearse coming to Arena Ciudad de Mexico. It pulls up, they open the back, and there's a casket inside. Um, the guys pull the casket out, they put it on a forklift. Unfortunately, Tejano Jr. was not driving the forklift. It would have been way cooler <laughs> if he was. Um, they used the if forklift. You're wondering- Hold on. If you're wondering, I heard Soup's call is better than the Sting retirement match. <laughs> oh, come on. Look, come on. No, look, golly. <laughs> look, oh. They put the they put the coffin up on the stage and then they set these candles around it. And then one of the candles was hilariously out of place. <laughs> like Yeah, then, no no symmetry there. There was a clear pattern that the guy just put it in a weird spot. <laughs> he went rogue. <laughs> Um, they start playing back in black and Vampiro starts shaking the casket and then the casket opens and Vampiro comes out. Leather jacket, uh, black jeans. Sweating. Very, yeah, very colorful shirt under. Yeah, yeah. And he comes out and... Um, who came out first? Oh, Sam Adonis and uh, Jeff <laughs> yeah, Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett just jumped his ass, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam Adonis and Jeff Jarrett come out. Which, by the way, uh, another cool moment from the um, Satnam Singh 
Raj Desi match was Jeff Jarrett blasting Negro Casas with a with a guitar, bro. Yeah, and then he brought another one out for the Vampiro match. <laughs> so Jeff Jarrett brought two gimmick two gimmick guitars down down to Mexico, and um, th- so they beat up on Vampiro for a little bit, and then it's like every so often. I don't even remember if there was a countdown or if they just kind of did it when they did it. Yeah. It would cut to this guy in some, in a, like a, I guess like spooky makeup, like almost like mortician's kind of makeup. I don't know what you'd call it. Corpse makeup. And he would be standing in front of this picture, like a picture frame with a black like sheet over it. And he'd pull the sheet off and then the music for that person would play and they would come out. And it was like people from Vampiro's career who have like helped him or like he has faced off against. And you're going to have to remind me about some of the people who came out because I can't remember some of the first guys who came out. Oh, me neither. <laughs> I, 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 have, I do not remember. There were so many guys <laughs> that I don't remember. I know like one or two of them, but that's because they were like the, one, the ones that were most mentioned. Um, the guys who I for sure remember... Um, Cien Cara showed up with uh, his sons, Sanson and Forastero. Forastero, yeah, not the one in prison. Not the one in prison. <laughs> He's still in prison. Um, Cien Cara showed up, and then Conan showed up to like face yeah, it's off. Like a face, yeah, <laughs> to to face off against Cien Caras because you know they had that rivalry for um. Back in the nineties and they did like Cien the Caras was always a better wrestler. Yeah, they did like the retirement match. And uh I mean Cien Caras is he didn't get physically involved, but he was just there to face off against Conan. Conan didn't get physically involved really. Um or did he hit Sanson and Forestero? Do you remember? Uh I think he did, but I don't think they were impactful at all. He wasn't taking any bumps, is what we're trying no, to say. No, he had his he had his barbed wire baseball bat and kind of did some <laughs> stuff. Chess man, chess man showed up. Yeah, hell yeah, he did. He was the first, I think. He was the first guy, and he was so. beating up Vampiro. Everybody would come in to get a few hits on Vampiro, and then immediately Vampiro would have an ally come up. So after Chess Man, Octagon Junior came back out full gear. Like he had already wrestled in the night, but he came, he re geared up. And uh, he came out to defend him against Chessman. And then... Pirata Morgan showed up. <laughs> yeah. Like, the Pirata Morgan showed up. Um, yeah. He didn't show up with his son, though, because, you know, just like, you know, the, the news sites were saying, he's headed to WWE still. <laughs> <soon. laughs> he's going to do his pickup for NXT. Yeah. Um, Messias showed up. Yeah, Not- Pagano was in there somewhere. Yes, Pagano showed up. Um, Imagine if Tejano Jr. would have short, showed up with the forklift. <laughs> I was I was screaming that Tejano Jr. should have showed up if as soon as Pagano showed up. We wanted it so bad, bro. We wanted it so bad, but it just didn't happen. He must have had a booking somewhere else that night. Um, <laughs> but it's just kind of like nostalgia guy comes out, beats up Vampiro for a little bit. Guy comes out to help Vampiro, rinse and repeat for a few cycles. Um, Messias and Messias came out and then he really, I mean, he really beat up on Vampiro, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. He made Vampiro take the only bump of the whole night, you know? (laughs) Yeah. When we were watching it, you said, man, Vampiro hasn't taken a bump yet. And then just a really (laughs) stiff body slam on the ramp. (laughs) (laughs) That looked like it hurt so bad, dude. So they, um, he takes that bump and then Messias goes to put him in the casket. And this was the moment of the entire night, dude. Yeah. Yeah. This was the best moment of that Vampiro match. And this is what for me made me be like, I can't hate on this because it's very clear what they were going for with it. And maybe the execution wasn't a 10 out of 10, but I still enjoyed it. They open the casket. And as soon as they open the casket, you see somebody's in there. He opens his eyes. It's La Parca, bro. <laughs> La Parca is in the casket. As soon as it opens, it starts playing Thriller uh, by Michael Jackson. You just hear, do 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 And then they close it, and this music stops immediately. <laughs> awesome. Um, and, like, I don't know. I guess everybody was shocked, and 
and kind of gave Vampiro an opening to mount a comeback. And uh, he throws Messias in the casket, and that's it. And then, you know, Vampiro, I don't remember if he gave a little speech. I think he did. Yes, he did. Yep. And he was crying, and fun little retirement for Vampiro from this arena. So, I don't know. What'd you think? I thought, it. yeah, it was enjoyable. Um, You just have to take it for uh exactly what it was and yeah that's it look uh i didn't watch the match but it sounds fucking awful <laughs> <laughs> look dude if you if you would have been in there when la parka showed up you would have been like man this might this might have been the greatest moment in the entire year <laughs> i i i <laughs> I tweeted the that video or I I quote tweeted somebody and I used that that, that image of Ian Wright where he's like <laughs> Mr. Pigden, I thought you was dead. Yes. <laughs> La Parca, I thought you were dead. God damn it. Nah, he was good though. Um I think something That's awesome. It, it would definitely play better if we find out in the next few days that there was La Parca's son. That would be cool. That would be awesome. If it was anybody else, I don't know, man. (laughs) Yeah, there's that that part of me that, like, AAA was just like, let's just do it anyway. I really, like, I want to message him. He follows, we follow each other on Instagram. I really want to message him and be like, was that you? Can you tell me that was you? Yeah, you should, yeah. We'll get the scoop on that. But, um, I think maybe that was, like, that's where the fun kind of ended for the night after yeah. after that because the following match that's the one that had the big angle right yeah oh yeah. wait before the casket match uh we had the uh the hall of fame induction of psychosis i missed that i'm so mad yeah. i missed that it was nice uh he came out he's still on uh on one crutch recovering from his uh what did he break is was it his femur maybe his hip yeah, fuck. Uh, that sucks. Um, but yeah, he's still on a, a crutch for that, still recovering, but looked very happy to be uh, receiving this honor. And then there was a uh, a video uh, message from Rey Mysterio Jr. Thanking him for everything. And uh, yeah, it was nice. Always nice to see those guys get their flowers. How was the, um, how was the video? Did they do a video package for Psychosis? Yes. So... <laughs> Um, parts of it were really good. And then as someone pointed out in our, uh, discord, it looked like it was, uh, screen recorded on an iPhone because they had the, the bezel. Oh man. (laughs) So I don't know if they're using like cap cut when they put that together or something, but, uh, yeah, if you can, uh, not focus on that. It was a it was a good video package. Here's how they did it. They went to they went to Roy Lucier's triple A channel, screen recorded <laughs> it. Honestly, probably. Yeah, they searched up they searched up uh triple A Roy Lucier Sicosis matches on YouTube. <laughs> Micho el Millonario, bro. Yeah, that's what they did. I'm I'm really sad I missed that. I bet that was really cool. I bet that was really touching. I like Sicosis yeah. a lot. The guy's a beast. He deserves many good things. Um I mean, he was that guy for a long time, you know. I will. I hope they put it up on YouTube. I'll watch it if they put it on on YouTube. Yeah, they yeah. probably will. Yeah, I'm sure they will. All right, let's get into the dog shit part now. Oh, Dude, yeah. They this actually is... they're actually teasing something about this dog shit today. Really? Oh no. But I'll, I'll get I'll get into that. I'll get into that after you guys finish talking about the match. All right. The match, first off, Alberto Patron did like a promo before the match started backstage. He did a promo. Oh my God. And uh, basically kind of like rallying Mexicans to fight against Nick Nemeth and uh, the American menace, basically. Going very, very nationalist, very, uh, I mean, what well, works, works, obviously. I mean, CML is going to do the same thing on Friday. Maybe yeah, not to the yeah. same degree, but the same they Mexico. Did that like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, the same. <laughs> yeah, with with FJF. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's different though. That's like that's Riz versus uh, sexual 
We'll, we'll, talk, <laughs> about, we'll talk about MJF later. Don't oh, worry. No. We'll get to we'll get to him. Yeah, but um, so he does his promo. He's looking juiced out of his mind. Yeah. I mean, I was I was just saying like his vascularity was insane, dude. Was he had veins popping out of his pecs? I'd never seen some of these veins before. I didn't know you had veins in your pecs like that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> some of those spots, like one chop, one chop from like Pentagon or like Gunther. Oh, yeah. He would have been cooked, dude. Those blood vessels up top would have burst. That would have hurt like hell. I, yeah, if, if you haven't seen this, obviously don't seek out this match. Um, <laughs> uh, but Alberto, I was saying yesterday, he looked like an overcooked Dr. Wagner Jr. <laughs> like it's it like just dis- physically disgusted me at, at certain points. Like he was on some mega juice. Like he he read the comments online from Monterrey where people were like, why is he wrestling with a shirt on? He's so out of shape. And like he hit that gear hard. Yeah, he's, dude. He's- oh my God. Shout out to our boy P Buck for this one that he said he was on steroids and Ozempic at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he was shredded out of his mind. He came out, he put on like a, like the indigenous kind of uh, entrance gear with like the, um, like the skirt and the headgear. Yeah. Like a worse version of like, honestly, it, it, it didn't look as good as like when other people have done it. Um, like an Ultimo Guerrero, like, you know how, when he does like it, he like does like the headgear and stuff. It looks really good on him. I don't know who he, who he gets to do his, but it looks really good. Um, I think I've seen one of Los Villanos do it before, and it looked really good. But Angel Azteca used to do it. Yeah, and Azteca used to do it. His looked really good, too. Dude, this is awesome. But Alberto's, I don't know, man. It just didn't really hit that much for me because it didn't Alberto really... Patron. Yeah, it doesn't really match his character like at all. It's just kind of like they're kind of going at this angle for this match, but like maybe it would have worked better had we gotten more like, I don't know, build. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway, we get Alberto Patron. He makes his way down in the ring. Nick Nemeth pulls up in a, uh, that limo with a mysterious man behind him. And we were like, who is that? Who is that guy? Somebody said, is that JBL? Yeah, I think that it was G or P Buck said that. They were like, that's Great. JBL. Before we could even see his face, I was like, that's not JBL. We were like, that's not JBL. <laughs> it was motherfucking JBL. Oh my God. <laughs> it was JBL, bro. JBL comes out with Nick Nemeth just to look menacing, really. Yeah. Did he even say anything? <laughs> uh, no, he stood there for the national anthems. It didn't even stand ringside. He went and took a seat in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <He's... laughs> did they realize like when they paid his fee that it didn't include him hitting like a clothesline or anything? Cause yeah. like, oh man, I guess we can kind of get into the match a little bit now. Um, yeah. Pretty stinky match. Uh, they uh, moved spot to spot, broke some doors, broke some tables. It was what it was. Um, Alberto wins off of a foul when the ref's distracted. Low blows Nick Nemeth, pins him. And they do this whole shit. Well, I can let Foos explain the whole shit with the the eye shit that happens. Oh but, my uh, god! Goddamn, JBL shakes uh, Alberto's hand after the match. I'm like, if you're gonna have that, you could have had him hit Nick Nemeth with a clothesline at some point. But yeah, no, I. This was an all-time stinker, and that's not even including the uh, the post-match. Yeah, I think that if I'm giving them any credit, which I hate to do, it was better than their first match, but it wasn't like a great, great match, you know? Like, Yeah. It wasn't anything to write home about. It definitely wasn't anything that you have to like go and check out. Um, but um, yeah, like you said... Alberto Patron seemingly turns heel by finishing this match. Like he, oh my god, the the entire like when it's all combined, the the pre match promo of being like, "I'm gonna do it for Mexico. I'm doing it for the millions of people. They're all standing with me. 
rah 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 face patriot into immediately like low blow i just wanted to win the championship kind of stuff cheap like really cheap heat it felt like latin lover comes out to present him the belt he holds the mic he has the mic in his hand and he's like the gist of what he was basically saying was you know you didn't win the right way like you won this belt but like you didn't win in the right way and people are tired of like people not winning in the right way like kind of cheating shenanigans kind of stuff and alberto patron was basically like i don't care like <laughs> i don't care i'm the they champ beat the shit out of him, didn't they? yeah okay so then before they beat him before they beat him to pieces dog uh Conan comes out, like Conan's music hits, and you're thinking, okay, like the story they've built here is that um, you can't trust Conan, right? That's kind of been the thing that Latin Lover has always had, like a like a distrust of Conan, and um, like Conan's been building up his, uh, I don't know, like his reputation with Latin Lover and kind of being like, look, we we both on the same page, kind of, like you can trust me kind of stuff. And then Alberto Patron is also like, he's in the ring and he's like, oh, that thing with the eye that's been happening, that's me. Like he's basically, he basically said, I've, I've been the eye. That's been me. I and then Presedo Jr., unfortunately. <laughs> it would have been better if it was Presedo Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Conan comes out and like you kind of think, oh, Conan's coming out to like back up Latin Lover and like berate Alberto. And did he hit Latin Lover with a low blow? What did he hit him with? Uh, I think yeah, Alberto hit him with a what was supposed to be a low blow and ended up just kind of like punching him in the hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> and then can we mention what Conan was wearing really quickly? You can absolutely oh. mention what Conan was wearing. <laughs> so, okay, let me uh, let me paint the scene. So, Conan walking down the ramp, uh, barbed wire baseball bat in hand, um, hand on the barbed wire part. So, really, a real barbed wire baseball bat. Uh, Oakland Athletics hat on, and he is donning a goddamn WWE Judgment Day <laughs> T-shirt. <That's>... Uh, <laughs> if uh, if he wasn't doing tricks on it already, he just did a backflip. I'm like, oh god. Um, he did a yeah, six thirty so, on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I understand. The thing is, like, people are like, oh, it's because you know he's supporting Dominic, and it's like, I understand that, but like, this is like the biggest Triple A show. You couldn't find a shirt that says like Triple A on it. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on, man. Come on. I like Dominic. No, it he should have been wearing a Sikosi shirt, if anything. <laughs> exactly. Or a Latin lover shirt. And then, like, he rips that shirt off and he has on a fucking Alberto shirt, at least. Yeah. But, um, Conan comes out and then they start beating the hell out of Latin lover. And he runs that blade. Yeah. Off, like, a cookie sheet, too. Champion, bro. Yeah, great. Ran the blade. He was the best part of that entire segment. Was how how I mean, look, not a great segment, not a great idea, but Latin Lover. It was bleeding crazy, and it looked good. It made for a really good visual. Yeah, I, I think I like Latin Lover's overall character and sentiment, and it's it's this kind of meta booking where they're like, where Latin Lover's like, yeah, everyone's tired of this bullshit. We kind of want things to be on the up and up. And then for them to be like, no, that's stupid. Fuck you. <laughs> yes. Okay. And to me, this was the nail in the coffin because I already thought it was dumb. And then they did yep. this. And I was like, this is like my goodwill for the entire show is gone. Another guy comes out in a mask. <laughs> mask guy comes out, comes down to the ring. And uh, he gets down to the ring. The camera focuses on him. He rips the mask off. And it's Dorian Roldan, the owner of of triple a invading his own show and <laughs> telling latin lover basically you thought you could change things like you thought you had any power we run things here basically like just belittling him and all this stuff and the entire time i'm thinking you own the company <laughs> you own all of this 
Like, there's nobody in your way. Latin Lover is your employee. You could fire him. You could literally be like, Latin <laughs> Lover, you're fired. He just beat him up. And it, now he has a disgruntled employee who will probably get revenge on him at some point. But it just... Not great. Dude. Not great at all. And w- when I got to this point, I was like, they're doing another one of these angles, dog, where it's like... The authority is the invaders. And we're going to have to get a team of people who are pro triple A against like the anti triple A people again. Don't worry. They got they already got some people. Who do they some got? Big people. Who did you see by the way? So, what did you see? So like I was mentioning so they put so Latin Lover posted a story on his Instagram recently like I think like just a few hours ago. It was a post with of Fresero Jr. and Latin Lover, and he posted, Vendran cosas chingonas, carnal. So he's saying, big things are coming. Fresero oh, Jr. on Team Triple A. I'm going to rip my yeah. own hair out. <laughs> Dog, Fresero Jr. Nah, not even just Fresero Jr. alone. He's bringing the entire negocio tramado. Oh, he's bringing the money infernal as well. Hell, you know what? Do it. Bring in the pigs. Might bring as well bring in. Yeah, yeah. Might as bring well. Bring in the pigs. Strip Bring it of its parts, destroyed. bro. Strip it of its Dude, parts. Exactly. We could have like Team Triple A versus Team. I think they're like a foreigner faction or something like that. We can have uh, Satnam Singh facing out with Pig Destroyer. You're telling me we're running La Legión Extranjera again? That'd be hilarious. 2024 La Legión Extranjera, bro. And I don't know. To me, when when all of this happened, like, like we were talking about, like, you feel nostalgia from some of these things yeah the booking is not the best but like you know maybe the wrong guy won here and there but there was all these cool moments right you had all these cool moments and like Mm -hmm. it made you feel good at some points like you were like yeah okay like i'm not i'm not watching you know five star matches down the card you know but some of this stuff makes sense and some of this stuff is pretty good and it makes some good visuals makes some good you know passable and then this happens and it just makes me think, like, these guys don't know where they're going with any of this. All year for this? All year. They've been teasing this eyeball, and this is how it pays off on the biggest show of the year for your company. And it just makes me feel like they, they're they without a paddle. They don't know what direction they're going in. They're just... The way I said it yesterday, they've been treading water right and um the water is is they're sinking slowly and the water has has gone be it's it's overtaking their mouth right and now it's only their nose above the water that's what it feels like watching triple a in 2024 you're watching someone slowly sink you're watching a company slowly sink and drown and it's like when when you think maybe they're turning it around when you think maybe okay they they're, they're having a rough patch, but they have a plan. And they're going to get out of this, and it's going to be better. It's going to be good. And it's, that moment just never comes. And, like, last night, watching this, it's like that realization, that moment's not coming. Like, mm-hmm. they're tapped out. Maybe it's a bit harsh. Maybe people have different opinions on this, but that's just what I felt bring, when I was watching. Bring back UWA. I don't know, man. To me, like you said earlier, the, the moment with Matt Riddle was for you. This was that moment for me. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so silly because you have these these three triple manias a year. And like, why are you introducing something like this? Like, why are you introducing your big bad guy at the last one? Like, <laughs> yeah. this this won't be... Uh, paid off until probably next year's Mexico City show. If it's not abandoned, it might just be completely abandoned by the end of the year. <laughs> I'm, I would not be shocked if they abandon this idea before the year ends, you know? Don't worry, Fresedo Jr.'s got this. I know he does. I mean, and they should honestly just abandon this storyline because uh, rough. it's very bad. Very, very bad. This wasn't even the last match of the night. The last match of the night actually had some pretty cool moments in it, too. It wasn't a great, like, fantastic match, but had some entertaining moments. The Cage of Death, Domo de la Muerte. Um, three teams, Abismo Negro Jr., 
uh, Psicosis, El Fiscal, Los Vipers, against Psycho Circus, Dave the Clown, Murder Clown, Planet Clown, against La Secta Cibernetica, Cibernetico, Dark Cuervo, Dark Oz. Very quickly, um, so I guess since we don't want to spend too much time on, on this one, too much more time. What did you think about this? Favorite moment, Soups? Oh, favorite moment? Oh, my God. Uh <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> this is incredible. This is probably what I think about at the highlight of the show. So to paint the scene, um, Dave and Panic Clown have uh, have left the cage, but they uh, they left their boy Murder Clown in the cage. And we started to stress that Murder Clown would end up losing <laughs> his mask. And through just some outstanding uh, clownery, they uh, they rig up this harness and balloons <laughs> that also attached to some wires. But that's not as important. And they lower it into the cage. Murder clown climbs into it and they start ascending it. <laughs> and Foos and I start freaking out because like he's he's just hanging on. So like <laughs> you're relying on a guy that's not trained with this to uh, to stop it correctly. Um, luckily, murder clown made it out. OK, used the cool balloon contraption, saved his mask. Um, yeah, that was awesome. That was that was very stupid. Very fun. Um, yeah that was really awesome like we have the same favorite moment because that was so cool <laughs> oh man and i was double worried because like doesn't he have a broken arm yeah he was hanging on like really sketch like he put uh like half of his body through it so he was like really hanging on between like his body and his like arm so i was pretty scared for a moment but he made it yeah. out okay um, the match ends, you know, people get out one by one. Fiscal gets out. Abismo Negro Jr. Uh, kind of like turns his back on Psicosis. I don't remember what he did to him, but it was like the last two were Psicosis and Cibernetico. And, um, like the last spot of the match is like Psicosis is climbing out, um, like, the all natural way <laughs> like climbing up the wall and then like kind of climbing on the ceiling because it's like a domed it's got like a curve to it on the top so it's honestly kind of hard like it looks kind of hard to get out of there yeah <laughs> um a lot of you have to have a lot of upper body strength to get out of that <laughs> and so he is climbing out and the damn aviso negro jr camping the spawn bro yeah that's yeah that's scummy Camping uh, the exit up there, and see, but Nanti goes climbing out. And I think he used a ladder, maybe. Yeah, ladder to the dome ladder. Yeah. Yeah, and then he used that to climb out. And then Abismo Negro Junior sees Sikosi's climbing out, and he gets like a pipe, and he bashes his arms a few times, and Sikosi just falls straight down through this table that was under him, under like where he was hanging on. It looked made for a pretty cool visual, and Sikosi's unmasked. Um, he gives his little speech talking about how Antonio Peña like believed in him and like how he knows he's not the original Sicosis, but like he gave everything he had to this to this mask and to, like this character and Maricela like take the mask off of him. It was a nice moment. That was a sweet moment. Yeah, that was really nice. It was a really good way to end the show. I'll say that. Really, really good way to end the show. The match was not perfect. Um but it was a nice moment for Sikosis. It was a good way to... Yeah. And I saw somebody mention this. It's like, wow, Nicho, the first Sikosis, gets put in the Hall of Fame on the same night that Sikosis 2 loses the mask. And it's just nice. So, that's Triple Mania. Horrible. <laughs> yep. I think it's fair to say five bad Triple Manias in a row. Yeah. Yep. I can't say anything about Monterrey from last year because I didn't watch the whole thing, so I can't say if it's good or bad. And I, I only, I, I try, I try to only give opinions on things that I have watched or know about. So, yeah. Triple A. Yep. Anyway, flo cleanse cool. our palate, dude. What were you doing while we were watching this? <laughs> <slot? Okay. laughs> Okay, so while you guys are, you know, suffering watching uh, AAA, 2024 AAA, I, uh, I was at, a, at an indie show. I had to drive quite a bit, but, you know, 
it was it was worth it because Ultimo Guerrero and she said were coming, so you know I had to. Um, show was fun. I enjoyed some of the uh, undercard matches. You know, some of the there was some younger guys in like the first match. You know, they definitely have potential. Uh, one of them, there's so many people that are named Angel Rebelde. So I mean, I you can just go out and pick out which one. I can't remember which one it is, but he's one of the Angel Rebeldes. But there's like five of them both in Mexico and, you know, the U.S. So, you know, they did, you know, they were, they're, they're definitely green, but, you know, I can definitely see them, you know, doing better things in the future, hopefully. Um, there was one guy, he, it didn't look like he could do this move, but holy shit, you know the, the senton that, like, sent, uh, no, it was like a, it's sort of like a senton, the, the one that Neon does whenever he does this finishing move, where he goes up to the top rope, but then he sort of, he sort of, like, does the senton, but he, like, does, like, a flip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he sort of did that. So he he so this guy went up to the top rope and he does that onto two other guys outside. I'm like, this dude doesn't. I'm like, I'm thinking that he's gonna do a moonsault, like in a, like just not like a normal moonsault. Oh, but no, he he pulled that he pulled off that the thing like the move that Neon does from the top rope. And I was like, holy shit! I was not expecting this dude to be able to do that. But you know, it it was really cool. I wish I would have gotten a video of it. Um, the Celsius match was pretty fun. Um, I enjoyed it. It went like maybe like slightly over ten minutes, but I enjoyed it. Uh, but you know the big match, the main event, Ultimo Guerrero versus Chicero, dude. These guys came here to work. You know, really good match. You know, I'm I'm glad that I got to see it live. You know, awesome. then Ultimo Guerrero gave a speech afterwards. You know, he's very thankful. He was, you know, Ultimo Guerrero's awesome. But before the whole show, the whole show started, I actually got to. Me and talk to both uh, Edgy Cero and Ultimo Guerrero a bit, which is really cool. Both of them are really, really nice. And uh, I even bought a match from Ultimo Guerrero and he signed it. That's Hell so yeah. beast. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's so much better than what we were doing, honestly. <laughs> yep. That sounds like a really good main event, too. Wow. Like, did you get to see that live? Yeah. You sent us that video of Edgy Cero hitting that uh, top rope elbow. It looks so good. Yeah. God, I would. That's a that's a really awesome experience. Yeah, it was really fun. What did hopefully? It, in, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna ask. Um, you mentioned uh, you asked that you said about uh, his match against oh. Shadow. Wow. What did he say about? Yeah, that? yeah, okay, okay. So uh, I was I told uh, that she said when I was uh, in line, you know, to take a picture with that she said. Uh, you know, I, before I t- after I took a picture with him, I was like, I was like, yeah, your match with that uh, with uh, Shadow was, you know, it was really great. And he was like, it was all right. And he, and then he was like, he's like, he was like, I'm joking, I'm joking. And he was like, I really enjoyed that match. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that was like one of the best. I think that's one of the best matches I've seen this year. You two were just, you know, pulling out pure Yaveo in that match, and it was just incredible. And then he was asking me like, where did I watch? And he was, I was like, oh, IWTV. And I was like, oh, okay. That's but awesome. yeah, like he was, he was just really cool about that. I I like that he joked about it, you know. But I'm I'm glad that he did enjoy the the match with Chelwa. Because I really enjoyed that one as well. How is Ultimo Guerrero? Is he like a? Is he like also like kind of a funny guy in real life? Or yeah, he's a fun. He's a, he's a he's a laid back guy. He just seems like really just really chill guy. That's so cool. God, that show was running uh, like five minutes from Collision, I think, in Arlington. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I I read somebody was somebody said yeah that. The venue is like five minutes from Collision, and mm-hmm. a small part of me was like, "What if they? What if they do both shows?" Like, <laughs> but unfortunately, it uh, doesn't look like it. That would that would have been funny. That would have been awesome. Yeah, that's really cool, though. That's really really cool. Yeah. God, Texas gets uh, good stuff. Good lucha. Good mm-hmm. lucha things. God. <laughs> Um, that actually serves as a pretty good segue, I guess, to talk about more CMLL yeah. stuff. Oh, CML. CMLL. Um, funny enough, last yeah. night, <laughs> Soups, you remember last night when we, when we got done watching Triple Mania, we were like, let's cleanse the palate with some CMLL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we watched, um, Barbosa and Santokan Jr. against Los Atrapa Sueños from this past Tuesday, um, Guadalajara, Martes de Glamor. Um, really? I mean, good, good match, man. Yeah, especially in comparison with what we had just watched. <laughs> yeah, it was like, 
in ring better than everything we watch. So, um, and actually, you know, I mean, they were actually working, actually doing some really cool stuff. Um, I mean, we know Los Atrapa Sueños. Those are them guys, bro. Like, Rico Meta. so underrated. They be doing stuff that I'm just like, man, just big old smile on my face. And then just classics on Dokkan Barbosa, like, really, really, like, good uh, chemistry together. They just worked really well. But um, we can we can kind of use this time to, I mean, we haven't recorded in a while, so we've missed quite a few, uh, I mean, talking through some CMLL shows. Obviously, we're not going to go through. Yeah, we're not going to go through all of them, but we'll go <laughs> through some highlight matches. I'll start it off. One one thing that was not a highlight, uh, MJF, please never come back. <laughs> <laughs> not a big fan of that one either, yeah. What did you What did you dislike the most about it, Flug? What, what's, what really soured you on that one? The in the in ring work, I don't. MJF tries to be everything at once, and he fails so badly at doing everything. He's just terrible. It kind of like when I was watching it, it did kind of feel like it was mo- mostly Templario doing anything like mm-hmm. interesting, and then it would be like Templario getting some stuff off. MJF kind of like stops him, plays to the crowd. Let's get some heat. Then Bladio starts whooping up on him. Let's stop this. Play to the crowd. Let's get some heat. Rinse and repeat until MJF beats him clean. And I was just like... Very crappy destroyer. Uh, yeah, I was just like... The one match where you could cheat. Like... Yeah. And it would make a lot of sense. It probably would have made the whole match better. Like, in hindsight. But like destroyer? What, what is this? We're, are we watching IWRG? No, I'm watching CML. Because, <laughs> like, winning clean, to me, is like... You were... I mean, like, the heel just what, what, like, horrible, burying, basically burying Templario that way, it felt like to me, because it's like, Templario doesn't get any comeuppance from this, he doesn't get any way out of, like, no, not even, like, a post-match promo, nothing like that, just, oh, he lost, oh, well. Yeah, and it's not even, like, MJF only won because he cheated, like, Templario was, like, maybe a better wrestler, like, you know, because that's that's such a classic, like, finish, The, the... the the Rudo is like not as good, but he's willing to do whatever. Um, and in this case, it was just like no, the Rudo was actually just better, and he makes Templario look like a huge dork. And it's like oh, all right, I guess you know <laughs> he just but took. No. Oh. <laughs> but I get censored for saying that Fresedo Junior should you know destroy <laughs> should destroy <laughs> MJF. Cut the feed. <laughs> oh man. Um, on that same card, though, there wasn't actually there was a really great match. The match before that, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the one that someone rated a zero, even though they rated a what, what was it like a an Austin Theory match an eight out of ten. Look, I'm gonna say it like this. Hold up, let me find this guy's. Uh, let me find this guy's cage match. Let me find this guy's we're cage. Put, match. Yeah, we're putting you on blast. Where is he? Okay. H field 07, brother, you're not a friend of the pod. You're a damn enemy of the pod. If we ever catch you on this pod, brother, you're cooked. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say right now. Full gave this a zero on cage match. This is the best match of the whole night. One of the better matches, I would say, of of uh, of August. Mascara Dorada yeah. and Volador Jr. against Pac and uh, Rocky Azucar Romero. This match was really good. Yeah really really good um this guy gave it a zero and let me just read the review for you because nonsensical stuff it's, a, it's a way too long it's way i don't want to i don't want to have to reread <laughs> I'll have to hear, reread that again i read the last sentence just to tell you how nonsensical this is if you want a match where no one has chemistry everything looks poorly planned out and things look so fake and cooperative that you start doing other things, then this is the match for you. You are an Austin Theory fan, man. <laughs> You're an Austin Theory. You're an unironic Austin Theory fan. Please. Like predators. Please. I never want to hear it. I never want to hear it. You rate Logan Paul a seven. Austin Theory <laughs> an eight. 
Dude, they probably they probably have like they're probably before Velveteen Dream got outed, he probably would have given him like a 10, 100 percent Unbelievable type of guy exists in this world, brother. I'll tell you that right now. Every day I see more and more of this world, and every day I realize that many people are not like us. We're, there's there's many different types of guys in the world, and <laughs> you see, this many of them are very keep. evil. <laughs> you see, that's why we gate keep. I was gonna say the other day. I understand it's a ch- it's a difference in opinion, but this this is malice. This is this is beyond. We don't see eye to eye on this. Our philosophy no, please, of, of what please, pro wrestling this is. Person, yeah, if so, okay, whoever, okay, this person, if you really thought that match was a zero out of ten, please go watch last night's Triple Mania. Please, I beg you, go go watch uh, go watch Vampiro's last match or uh, go watch uh, what was it? Uh, Alberto El Patron versus uh, Nick Nemeth. Please go, go watch one of those two matches. <laughs> Different type of guy, man. Different type of guy. Not good. Not good. But um, Soups, give me some of your favorite matches uh over these last few weeks, brother. Okay. Um, August second. Uh, I know this one will get float. Uh, good. Esfinge versus Valiente Junior. That was trash. Nah, it, <laughs> it wasn't. Went nine minutes. <laughs> Uh yeah, yeah I, I, I can't remember anything from that match. I can't no. remember anything from that match. It no. was horrible. Okay, let me let me paint it to you like this because I know Foos remembers this part too. Valiente close fist punch Esfinghe in the jaw, and this dude starts fencing, doing the fencing. <laughs> yes, I thought I thought this dude was cooked. That and popped he, me. You know, I I thought he was legit concussed, and you know he reverses it. Beat some. I thought that was a good ass match. Um, but you know, Floke was a big fan of the uh the Will Osprey MJF uh 59 59 <laughs> match. No, it was not. <laughs> I literally oh. said that's the worst match of all time. And that uh, the all in match might be even worse than that. Um, I really enjoyed the uh Los Depredadores uh Cybernetico recruitment thingy that they had. I thought that was a fun match to get a lot of young guys that we don't see on a card, get to show out a little bit. Um, yeah, your favorite, your favorite young guy, forty six year old retro. Hell yeah, <laughs> he's forty six. Uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, someone, he's in his forties. That's all I know. But yes, he's like forty something. Someone fact check this and email us at. Uh... <laughs> you know what the worst part is, bro? You can't even um, you can't even rate that uh, depredador cibernético because like one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven of the guys in the match don't even have a cage match profile. Dude, it's been For like real. it's been like two years since Vegas debuted, and he still doesn't have a cage match profile. <laughs> I uh, this is a brief aside. Um, I had to go to Esfinghe's cage match page, and I'm gonna report a user named Crow do not, for do not <laughs> giving Esfinghe a zero point zero. Don't report, don't report that. <laughs> They're so right. Oh man, that guy's don't report cool. that. I don't report that they're 100% right. But if I get a 10, I get a warning. <laughs> I get a warning for cage match. <laughs> the, hey, no, it, that one was not justified at all because that was a 10 on Shadwell. They should have left that one up. <laughs> Look, unfortunately, cage match is run by our ideological enemies, the haters of CMLL and Lucha Libre. <laughs> Never mind. Retro's 51 years old. <laughs> Retro's no 51? fucking shot. Supposedly, according to There's cage no match. Way. There's no way. I played a cage match at Retro's 51 years old. That's crazy. <laughs> you maybe take this with a pinch of salt. Maybe. Just maybe take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, I'll give one more. Uh, Angel de Oro, <laughs> Dragon Rojo Jr., and Soberano Jr. versus uh, Teton, Volador Jr., and our goat Flip Gordon from the August 10th uh saturday coliseo show um a match that if i read it out you would think that it's a match where teton and volador kind of just coast through it as as they've been uh known to do but they showed out a little bit teton's kind of been on his uh on his coliseo game lately so like that match that was a fun match flip gordon just continuing to improve and improve (laughs) beast real beast (laughs) <laughs> uh, Tana's waiting for the callback for the uh uh what is it Be- uh Super Junior Tag League. Yeah, I think he waiting it, for that call. 
uh, our boy Fuminori Abe said uh, that he got confused and thought it was Cork and Hall, <laughs> so he started <laughs> falling out. Oh man, um, <laughs> a match I really liked was actually from uh, two nights ago, eight sixteen twenty four, uh, CMLL Super Viernes, um, Akuma Difunto. Santo Can Jr. against Luis Gardenia, Pelón Encapuchado, and Volcano. That match was really good, dude. That match was really, really fun. Um, I don't know. Just a, a bunch of really cool stuff from like everybody. That The finish, unbelievable finish. I love that move, bro. Where they stack up on the... Uh... God, that's, that's just insane. The distance they cleared on that. Um, Santo Can Jr. on the top rope. Top turnbuckle on the corner. Difunto, also on that turnbuckle, gets up on Sandokan's shoulders. Sandokan stands up. Difunto stands up. So it's like, God, how how high was he up in the air? Maybe like <laughs> 10 feet up in the air? Higher than Something that? like that, probably. Maybe 15 feet up in the air? And they just fall forward. And there's enough distance. I, I There's enough distance between the two where like, um, Santokan falls on a guy and then Difunto falls perfectly on the other guy like more than halfway across the ring just because of how high they were the distance they cleared it was awesome That's really sick. good stuff um, and then I already talked about that tag match uh, with uh, Rocky and Pac so yes exciting stuff my coming turn. up though yeah my turn all right uh, let me check the date real quick. Hold on. The date was uh, August August 6th. Barbosa versus Hijo del Villano Tercero Lightning match in Guadalajara. Very good stuff. Barbosa, you know, he, he was in the Torneo de Escuelas this year. You know, he was he was missing for, I think, like a few months. I can't remember the span of months, but he he's, you know, he's finally back. And man, this, you know, he's just, he's he's been doing great. He's been... He's been he's really been showing out these last few matches, you know, with yeah. alongside Sandokan, you know, against Los Atrapasueños, you know, having the lightning match right now that I'm talking about with the Hijo del Viano Tercero. They really, you know, they got their moves in, you know, they did very solid stuff, you know, some nice brawling here and there, you know, just good stuff, you know. Barbosa is definitely someone to look to look out for, and I honestly hope uh, his uh, his team alongside. Uh, Sandokan, you know, hopefully they make it to, you know, hopefully they appear in Arena Mexico together, you know, sooner rather than later, because I think they would be sick. Like a match against maybe Los Depredadores or Los Hermanos Chavos would just be awesome to see. Honestly, uh, another like, match. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, no, they have like, I think maybe Supes and I were talking about this yesterday, about how CMLL has so many great, like, rudos that can just, like, work together so well. Yeah. Like, yeah. um, like Los Villanos, like you can put anybody in with Los Villanos and they're they're gonna make a great trio, you know? Mm-hmm. Like you can slot in Santo Can Jr., you can slot in Barbosa, you can slot in Cobarde. Yeah, Hijo de Stuka Jr. Um I even heard good things. Yeah, I even heard good things about uh Sagrado from last night, I think. Yeah. Or no, maybe that was a little no, 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 no. It was Sagrado yesterday. Yeah, Sagrado yeah. was yesterday. So, look. They've got, I mean, they've got some really, really good guys in that mid card, bro. Like, Teton. <laughs> hey! <laughs> that, hey! Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey. yeah our, our favorite mid card, <laughs> Teton. Yeah, our favorite um, mid carder. Oh, but, uh, very, very. If, if, Sunny if days you know ahead. that reference, if, if you know that reference, good, good catch. <laughs> we're we're going to send you a t-shirt when we get away. <laughs> um, what were you saying, Floke? Was it another match you really liked? Oh, another match? I You know, it was a Tuesday match, but I thought it was actually really solid. You know, I got to, you know, I got to do the the usual shout out for our boy, Sherwa. You know, it was the, I think it was... Uh, it was Audaz, Volcano, and Shelwa. It was, I believe, August 10th. Yeah, August 10th. It was Audaz, Volcano, and Shelwa. No, that was Colise- Arena Coliseo. Uh, it was Guerrero Maya Jr., Shelwa, and Pelón Encapuchado uh, versus Felino, Felino Jr., and Rey Bucanero. They, uh, 
It was a Tuesday match. It was, let me see the date. The 6th. Uh, right? Oh, yes, last Tuesday. Yeah, last Tuesday. I think it was the same date as the uh, the Hijo del Villano versus uh, uh, Barbosa match, but it was in Arena Mexico. But that match was actually pretty, I thought it was pretty solid, you know. Not the best match in the world, but, you know, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, the finish, the finish is really, really cool. Uh, where uh, uh, I think which what what do they do? They did a uh, I think they did the spot. What's that one spot called? They did that old classic uh, pin finish. Um, but it was really it was really cool to see that. And um, yeah, I mean Shelwa, you know, continues to just show how great he is, you know, with his his technical skills in these matches. And then another match that was actually I thought was actually pretty solid. You know, I'm not gonna say where you can watch it, but I'll bring up two Arena Puebla <laughs> matches. So uh, the first one was it was it was Robin. Uh, it was Robin Shelwa and Millennium versus a uh, Rider and I believe two other guys from Puebla. And let me just say that finish was awesome. Okay, so you okay, so you guys want to know what they did for the finish? Hell yeah. Okay, so uh, Fuz, you know the Estrella spot, the Estrella finishing spot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Robin and Millennium did that spot with that Est- with Estrella with two of the guys on the on the uh, opposite team, and then Shelwa runs into the middle of the Estrella, and then I, I forgot who it was. It might have been Ryder, uh, but Ryder runs into you know he's about to attack Shelwa, but Shelwa catches him and gets him in a in a submission in the middle of the Estrella, and they all just all three guys tap out. It was awesome. That's so real. That's a classic. Like just spot. in a dude in a Estrella spot, and then you know, finishing it off with a with a Shelwa submission in the middle. Awesome stuff. Like generally, I need to see more of that. Bring back all their you know finishing spots. And then just have Sherwa, you know, have Sherwa do some wacky Yave. Nice. And the other Puebla match that I want to talk about um, is um, Olympia and Era versus uh, Skadi and Kira from that same uh, that same Arena Puebla show. Um, it was the twelfth, yeah, twelfth of August. It was it was really look. There was a few iffy spots. I think maybe like two or three but you know thankfully they were able to you know correct them or you know they were able to you know shift them so it wasn't it didn't look like they messed up too bad but i thought it was a really solid match you know i i enjoy the chemistry that both teams have you know gita and Scotty just continue to you know keep showing how great of a team they are um you know i hope in the future they become the cml world women's tag champs because the current ones god just we don't have to talk about them we don't we, we can just... yeah <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. They those new ones oh, were crowned. Man. Um but yeah, you know, hopefully in the future you know, I can't wait to see I can't wait to see for them doing this match like I don't know, maybe a year from now, two years from now. I I especially, you know, whenever they get more experience and stuff like that, I think it'll just be like they'll have like a maybe a classic match, you know, maybe in like two years down the line if they do this match again. I saw, um, when was it? It was like, I think maybe it was when they did the, uh, the tournament for the women's world tag team titles and Eda and Olympia got eliminated. And I think Lucha Blog tweeted this thing that was like, Eda is a bad wrestler who can do some really cool stuff. And I was like, not too much on my goat, please. Oh man, not too much on my go head off, please, bro. Please, bro. Please. <laughs> she, has good, she has good ideas, but she can't always get get them. You know, I think. Can't always... I was just gonna say, I think putting them together sometimes is is the struggle there, you know. Yeah. Going from one to the other organically, but yeah, she she's got the ideas, but the execution always isn't always there for it. I think that's the biggest problem. I believe. I believe. Yeah. More reps. You can do it, Ada. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Good stuff. Good stuff. That's, Any more matches? Yeah. Wanna? Any CML stuff? There's one more thing I would like to talk about. Oh, All I'd right. like to talk about a few other things. What do you got to say, Paul? Go ahead. Oh, this is not CML related, but you know, the Grand Prix is coming up. If you haven't purchased the CML membership. I know it's expensive, $35, but if you buy it right now, 
you'll get both the Grand Prix and the Aniversario. So, you know, if if there's ever been a time to, to become a member, you should probably do it right now. <laughs> This guy said, this is a CLL related, but the CLL Grand Prix is coming up. Yeah, and then just well, this is I, real well, crazy I, for the subscription. <laughs> okay, I, I was going to, I'll, 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 I'll mention the non CML stuff after you say what you, what you have to say. Promo right code Floak. Yeah, promo code <laughs> Floak <laughs> for 5% off. I wish. No. Now I was just going to talk about, um, I was going to talk about uh, Hologram. Oh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Floke's goat. He drove all the way to see him. <laughs> He's a beast, dude. Oh, yeah, I did. I did see him. Yeah, that's true. I did see him. Where'd you drive? <laughs> what show did you go to see, Floke? It was la- not this, not the one that just passed, but two, I guess two weeks ago, technically now. Yeah, who'd you go see? Hologram. What pro? Uh, what promotion? Uh, Hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Bad, wait a bad one. A bad one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You could get a Floke bad. for this one. A but bad promotion. <laughs> but if my memory serves me correct, soups, you're gonna you're gonna be um you're gonna be away for a little bit uh out oh, somewhere, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm uh I'm going to the UK to uh hold on 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 going to see Michael Oku. Hold on, that's his goal right there. I'm going to scout Neon. <laughs> and Hedge uh, uh at the Rev Pro Show. You know, I'll be in town, so you know, I'm gonna go see all in at Wembley just to see what some, all the, yeah. the fuss is about. Uh, we got a big AW guy right here. About. That's These true. Guys. He's going. So, he's going to the UK solely to see Michael Oku. That's that's really the reason that he's going. Look, this, <laughs> he's really this guy right here. This guy right here is taking a plane to go watch <laughs> MJF and Will Osprey. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this, you know, so you know. <laughs> Uh, we 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 uh, you know we throw out AEW fan accusations a lot, but this one, <laughs> I'm saying it might stick. It might stick. No, I mean, man, you guys, you time. guys uh, talk about it so much. I just really had to see what all the <laughs> happens. Like. <laughs> I, oh, talk, I shit on them more than I oh, talk, talk positively about and them. And yet, you're saying hey. this is a swerve strickland <laughs> in the group chat. <laughs> hey. Oh, I had to get a couple pictures. I got yeah, a couple, shout a couple out pictures. Shout out swerve. He's I got a couple good. pictures of hologram as well. AW. I, I was expect- look. I wanted to see Atlanti Junior, you know, but he wasn't there. He was. I think he was there the pre the next day, but I couldn't. I couldn't be there. Um, AW is the most like. There's some really cool guys in there, but sometimes I'm not watching yeah. it. <laughs> it's promotion yeah, of all poor, time. Yeah, you got some of the worst guys of all time, like MJF, Sammy Guevara, Will Ospreay. Uh, you know, That's, guys uh, like that. That's new ROH tag team champ Sammy Guevara to you, brother. Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh, you catch the you? Well, you watch that match live? Is that why? No, you're no. That? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. He was too. I know it. I was watching. Uh, I I was watching. The only match I watched live yesterday was uh, Hologram against um, Angelico, and it was good. It was really good. Oh, he's flying. Look, like hologram, and honestly, hologram has just been on a heater, dog. Like he's just been. I think he did every residency show, every collision. I guess. I think so. He might have. Look, I just like to make a quick point right here as well. Um, the other day, the other day I posted, um, because they uh, AEW posted these new flags they have for MJF with MJF's face instead of the stars on the American flag, right? And I said, where's the hologram mask? What are y'all doing, right? Because <laughs> that'd be good merch. It would. It would be good merch. I mean, honestly, if if AEW sells a hologram mask at a price point of, I mean, I don't know, 40 bucks? 49.99. Oh. How much do they sell Rey Mysterio masks for? In WWE, five dollars. Yeah, and like not that much. Those masks are terrible. Dog. Outside, I don't know, Mexico. No, look, if you're buying a WWE like official Rey Mysterio mask, yeah, I don't know, man. Just give me the money. I'll find you a better That's one. That's the honestly. only way he'll come up and you know bump heads with you and then like <laughs> swear at you under his breath or something. <laughs> like those those masks they sell on Fanatics, bro, look awful. They look terrible. Oh, that's right. They yeah, that's Fanatic shit. Oh, yes. My God. Oh, it looks worse than the Sankara Pina shirt. They look horrible, bro. Like they look like they're made out of, and they sell them for fifty bucks. These are fifty dollar masks, and they look I've terrible. Seen, I've seen better quality masks outside of Anaheim than those. <laughs> yes, and it, like 
a quarter of the price. <laughs> yeah, like I bought a solitario mask at like a markup for thirty bucks, and it's better than that. That's crazy. Yeah, they look horrible. Like, dude, the mask that the Kung Fu Junior makes better masks than those. <laughs> I should go, man. Easy. I don't know. I don't know who the supplier is, but they look terrible. But anyway, the point I was making is, I, I said this about hologram, bro, and a few people uh, replied to the post, and they were like, "Who do y'all think hologram is? Like, who hologram's nobody? He, well, he had three matches. He's got a lot of potential, but he's nobody. Shut the fuck up. All right. Whoa, I'm just man, gonna say like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like. Dude, no, for real. Like, how the fuck do you think you make stars? Exactly. Like, it's like, okay, Rey Mysterio, awesome. One of, uh, uh, one of the greats. Clearly, like, the way you make love... stars is being racist on, on, you know, on TV. That's clearly the way you make stars. Like, kids like him because he wears a mask and he looks dope as hell. And he does cool and, stuff. Yeah, hologram looks dope as hell. Does cool shit exactly just there you go that's that's really just a one plus one situation. and the thing is this is a wholly owned what i'm assuming to be a wholly owned character of aew they created yeah, hologram yeah. they created this persona they created this mask they created this look if there's anybody to get behind it's something it's 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 a concept like this you created yeah, this piece. entire thing you can make him this is this is pro wrestling you can make him do whatever you want and if yeah. it fits and if people like it, guess what? You got something, brother. Yeah. So, oh, so he's already got the CML verified, so he can he can wrestle alongside CML Luchadors. Exactly. He wrestled with Mystico. Yeah. yeah. Like Oh, I yeah. It's it's kind of baffling. Hopefully they wise up to it. Like, dude, we I I the whole fan base is sick of uh like print uh order shirts like the, the absolute worst dog shit shirts you've ever seen <laughs> just give us like a mask or something like come That'd on be, now oh my god like look you can't what find a supplier really that's junior merge that'd be beast that'd be that's so the beast. roh tv champion that's, that's right on there, the mlw man. shop brother no. <laughs> <laughs> no look maybe i don't understand the logistics of it right maybe it's more complicated than this but i feel like a good jumping off point send a guy down to arena mexico bilingual person some or maybe ask tim all to, to give somebody to, to interpret right go down there find one of those stands find the nicest quality stand you can find right ask those guys those mascareros like y'all want to work together we got we got some work for you right like if you make yeah. us this mask this is the design we want this is the quantity we want and maybe this right. is how much we're we're looking to pay for this buddy come on you could or just like yeah. do a test run too, right? Exactly. Like exactly you get a thousand masks. Yeah. And if you sell out, guess what? You just sold out. Like that's fine. Get, do it again. More. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Exactly. Um, it's as easy as DMing Kung Fu Junior on Instagram. It's it's <laughs> really that easy. <laughs> like there's a whole mar there's a market for this. Like there's uh, mascareros, like what do these people think that these masks just appear out of nowhere? Like in CMLO, like the, the stands outside, bro, they have everybody. You ask them, and yeah. they're gonna be. They're most likely they're gonna find that mask for you. They're gonna be like, "Yeah, you can buy this one." It's uh. They, have, they even have wrestlers that debuted this, that you know debuted for CML this year. They they have Shelwa masks already. Of yes, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. And it, to me, it was more. It was less of a like. Um, to me, it's just like other fans. It's like if you can't see this, like if you're down on hologram right now. My first question is why? Because he's kind of proved, like, over this last month, over the, all these matches he's had on Collision, right? He's kind of proved that he can, like, excel in, like, every type of match. Yeah. High-flying single stuff against uh, Mortos looked unbelievable. Tagging mm -hmm. with Darby Allen looked great. Tagging with Mystico looked great. Against um, Angelico looked great. If we can, yeah. uh, we just have to replicate this on, on, I mean, you don't even have to, dynamite. you don't even have to put them on dynamite, bro. If you don't want to put on dynamite, keep him a collision only guy, build some feuds around him. Even like, you don't have to push him as a main event guy right now. Of course not. Nobody's asking for that. No. Get him some good, good mid card matches. feuds. Yeah. Give, give yeah. him the TNT title, you know, give it to an actually good wrestler. <laughs> but if you build him the, up. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's already gotten so many cosigns like mystico huge coast that's probably like one of the biggest cosigns you could possibly get um 
And then, yeah, like you said, he tagged with Darby, who's like been there since the start. He is like probably like top five of their like TV wrestlers. And the fans love him already. Yeah. I don't know. And like, I, I, I very much get the feeling that AEW is behind him. Uh, so I guess this criticism is more against like guys who are like, well, who even is that? He just appeared. He just started. Brother. Right. That's the, that's, that's wrestling, man. That's yeah. what it is. Like if a guy comes out and he gets this much of a connection with people and he is shown over and over again, like he's putting on great performances. Okay. They're going to be like, well, he can't talk. Doesn't need to right. yet. No. So what? Exactly. Plenty of guys who can't talk. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> so besides, what? Even if, besides, even if he does, you know, if, if the, the rumors are true about the Lucha Bros going, give him, what, what's that guy's name? Alex, Alex Abraham. Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can you mer- that guy. You'd be cooking in some, like, light-up shoes and shit? Exactly. You yeah, can, you can yeah. Get, you can give him, like, a light-up. Hell, have a have hologram a team with Futuro since he has you know the freaking LED headgear, whatever the hell that <laughs> hell is. Yeah. And like you said, Foos, they own the gimmick. Exactly. Exactly. It's just you're pushing your brand. Like you're, he's not gonna jump to WWE and be hologram, hologram. up there. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, gonna have to be somebody else. So like, kind of incentive for him to be as much as he can be an AW, so he can stick around yeah. and be an AW guy. As long as he wants, really. I mean, he's exactly. got. We've seen he has a talent, and um, honestly, look, Shibata does the thing with his phone where he's where he doesn't, <laughs> you know, like the yeah. yeah. You can do the same thing with hologram, except make it like a very futuristic voice, make it sound like a robot. Yeah, if you want. Give him an AI voice. He's from the future, bro. You could just be like. <laughs> yeah. Give him an AI voice. He doesn't speak English because he's, they don't speak English in the future, bro. Like, <laughs> wow, man. Uh, you can speak be, in Spanish in the future. That's yeah, awesome, man. Exactly. Just be like, Hologram is using this futuristic technology to communicate with us in a language we'll understand. Solved. You, you don't even have, he doesn't have to talk. <laughs> All right. Get Tony Khan on the horn right now. I'm man. saying, put, give me the book, man. You don't know what you're doing with this. <laughs> Maybe he does. Actually, he's he's been booking him pretty well, so maybe he does. But yeah, shout yeah, out get, hologram. Shout out, big shout out hologram. I saw he just got a shirt. It doesn't look horrible either. It's like it just says hologram and there's a big H on it. Hell yeah! <laughs> they, gotta put, they gotta put him with uh, los viajeros del espacio. That's what they gotta do. Mm. They are they already have the futuristic theme going on as well. So you know why not you guys, bring him bring him over? Bring him do you over. Think he make makes a CML appearance. Anytime eventually, soon. eventually, yeah. eventually, he doesn't really need to right now because no. I guess the primary focus is getting him over in CMLL, but exactly be cool, or in AEW. Sorry, uh, but it would be cool to see him in CML yeah. selfishly. Also, also, like if you know, if Adamiz was able to get signed, sign la mala fama. What's wrong yeah, with you? Yeah, 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 sign Ares Latino and Toxin. What is wrong with you? They're down there, you know, wrestling in Arena Naucalpa and. <laughs> Get no them out of there, Cody. That. Get them yeah. out of there. We Get need them give up like a whole stable of these futuristic luchadors that Bro. speak their future language. <laughs> and even if even if you don't want to do that, you can bring them in. For example, here, if you you know, since I know people usually say, "Oh, we don't want to pair," you know, people that are the same nationality. But if you want to build like a big heel group, why not? You know, make them a big deal and have them win. Like I don't know the ROH Six Man Tag Team Champions, and you know, bring them in. Have them beat down whoever the hell the current champions are, and you know they they win. You know La Mala Fama or the new heel group. You know make them make them big threats. You know, and eventually, know. if you want, you can even you know you can maybe even put them like in an eight man tag match with like Mortos or something, and then it can be I don't know against whoever the current ROH uh, six man <laughs> tag champions are and the uh, Luchador of the, or someone of their choosing. You know, that's Von Erics and uh, and Dustin Rhodes, bro. Exactly, it can be like Von. <laughs> that's Eric's. real Texan stuff, right there. It can be like Von Erics, uh, Dustin, and uh, what's that? The, the Dynamite. That was the Dynamite. What's his name? Yeah, Billy Dynamite. Uh, Dynamite Billy, Kid. <laughs> Billington. <laughs> yeah, Tommy Billington. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Tommy Billington. Yeah, bring. You know, they can be them four versus like La Mala Fama and you know the Beast Mortos, like. That sounds like an insane match right there. That'd be pretty cool. Unfortunately, the Beast Martos is uh, aligned with Roderick Strong right now. <laughs> That's like so weird. It's kind of cool at the same <laughs> yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. I'm, every I time I see him. Right now. 
What is Roosh doing right now, man? Like he's, he's with the Don Callis family. Oh yeah, he ate that pin. Yeah, uh, yeah he's, he's having a deal with Kyle Fletcher. Pin. He uh, he had to beat up Preston Vance, man. My beloved Pero Peligroso. Oh man! All right, we're hitting you know, about one. It was so funny because he was trying to tease, like, oh, yeah, La Facción Ingobernable, we're still here. It's like, no, you're not. That you faction has been dead. So dead. Stop. Bro, they I got... Swear, Rush without an Ingobernable faction is like, that. Like you know, just put the fries in the bag, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's Damn. he's probably not super happy about it because, like, he keeps pushing for them boys on, on Twitter and online and... Come on, dude! Just get through this Don Callis stuff. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Also, also, all the pe- the pe- I saw some people saying on Twitter that Rush is better than Hijo del Perro Wayo. No, he is not. Please right. shut up. I don't. Know. I'm glad I didn't see that. I would have said something. Yeah. And then, look. Okay, I want to talk about this really quickly. Actually, Uh-oh. addressing another one of my en- enemies uh, online right here. Um, the other day. Okay, y'all saw that post where somebody was like, "Whoa." Uh, Umaga was the first tribal chief. Um, he wore the uh, tribal chief necklace all this time ago, and yeah. it's this is all just a callback to him. Like he's the uh, original tribal chief. Yeah. That never happened. Like the tribal chief stuff was a storyline that started when, like 2020, 2019, 2020. I don't even remember. Uh, Umaga, yeah, 2020, I, yeah. I him? do not care. This story, that storyline has been dragged out for like what four, five years now. Who cares? They're just gonna keep bringing in more, more of their relatives, and whichever brand they're on is just gonna be you know overflowing with them. And there's basically gonna be zero to little interest in other storylines. Look, Umaga wearing that necklace back then, completely unrelated to any of the bloodline star right now. And somebody tweeted us like, "Oh, this is super long term booking," and I quote tweeted it. Of course, dude, because, you know, funny, funny guys. Like, I, and I said, you know, it's kind of funny that, like, you know, you're making up this storyline that never happened. Like, this this is not connected. It's a, it's a coincidence. Pretty cool coincidence, probably, you know? Like, okay, they wore the same necklace. They're related. But the stories are not connected at all. There's no nothing to tie these two together. I tweeted that. And this guy, quote, tweeted me, right? In Spanish. Big Mexican WWE fan, I'm assuming. Um... Quote tweeted me, pissed off, bro. I don't know what I don't know how what I said could have pissed him off so bad, but he was like, "I'm translating what he said." I, it was it was it was something to the effect of um, talking about me saying, "Oh, this guy calls himself a lucha libre fan, but he won't talk about um, he won't talk about all of the uh, challenges that never went anywhere, like all the storylines that were abandoned in Lucha Libre. All basically, I won't ever talk about all the negative stuff in Lucha Libre. Which, by the way, do we not talk about negative shit all the time on here? Like, yes, do we not? half this episode, yes. dog. Every, half single this episode. Time, every single time I bring up IWRG, it's negative every time. And the thing is, we we talk bad about every promotion. We have talked bad about CMLO. We talk bad about AAA. We talk bad about Lucha Libre. But for some oh, reason, if this. You my, here, <laughs> if you want my honest opinions, is saying we don't say anything negative. Here, I thought July was a horrible month for CML. I'll <laughs> go. All right, all right, and say I thought it was a horrible month. But um, I I he said all this right, and then he was like, "It must be nice living like this stupid asshole talking about me." Right. <laughs> At the end of the tweet, that's what it said, and I just want to say this. Um, I I I was gonna quote tweet him back, and I was gonna say some. I don't know. I was going to say something, but then I was like, is it worth the headache? Like, no. oh, I really like want to get into a fight with this guy. He obviously d- doesn't know what I'm talking about. And he's just like, because what I'm assuming is he read what I said and was like thinking that I was saying that all WWE fans just make up storylines and like don't make, you know, they, they don't make any sense. But I was specifically talking about Umaga was never a tribal chief. Like, that's not a story that happened. Does this guy want me to be like, every time I talk about WWE, do you want me to be like, fuck Forza Guerrera and Octagon for never doing their mask match? That's one of the worst things about Lucha Libre. Does he want me to like talk about every bad thing that's ever happened in Lucha Libre? Well, so it's like, it's Lucha Libre. Th- literally, those rec- those like challenges or, you know, whenever they start throwing like, oh, I want to Lucha the Puesas. Half of them always end up going nowhere. Actually, more than half of them always end up going nowhere. Okay. So using that excuse is so fucking stupid because 
half of them don't they don't go anywhere nothing happens it's like we understand exactly we understand that we know that's one of like the quote-unquote negative things but like you want me to bring it up every time i talk i'm first off i apologize for insulting your beloved wwe (laughs) i know that being a wwe fan is to be attacked every day um just to live life in constant uh yeah, persecution tough. you know it's it's so hard yeah. but come on man like come on you can't make a joke about the wwv what can you make a joke about bro anyway AEW. i talk i talk one shit about aw just we just spent like five minutes calling soups at aw fan derogatorily yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we, no we ended up calling him a michael oku fan which he is yeah, that that's a little too far we no. don't have to talk <laughs> off there after this <laughs> Oh, okay, man. you know what? Fuck the WWE. You know, fuck. You know, fuck talking about WWE, AEW. Let's end it off with some AMLL. Cause <laughs> wrap it up. Bring it home for us, folks. Bring they're it for they're us. bringing out. They're bringing out their big. Their big show this uh, tonight. You know, I, I believe I already talked about. I talked about Azteca Mania uh, five already. I I did go over the lineup. Um, but you know, the big matches to go. You know. You need to watch out for. I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I'm not sure when this episode's coming out, so if it comes out tomorrow, then I've probably already watched it, and the results will probably come out. But by the time we're recording this, it has not happened yet. So matches to watch out for. Uh, there's uh, La Copa por uh, por la Laguna uh, fourth edition. Uh, we have Shunga Shunga Junior versus Sonic versus King Perio. Shunga Shunga Junior won last year's cup. Uh, so I don't expect him to win. Uh, I would say this is King Pedio's match to win, but I wouldn't mind Sonic winning either. Um, the AML Light Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Mr. Thunder, you know, he looks like a stormtrooper, but he's such a badass. Uh, versus Angel Azteca Jr. Probably going to be a great technical match, very on the mat based. So look out for that. Um, I'm hoping Angel Azteca Jr. wins and, you know, Maybe he teases the Sherwa match that was supposed supposedly still happening, and you know the main event, the uh, the lucha de puestas. It's like a three way tag: La Esquizofrenia, Psico Loco, and Cardio Loco versus los Guerreros Celestiales, Guerrero uh, Lagunero, and Vengador Celestial versus los Hermanos Asteroid. Uh, prim- uh, hermanos Asteroid primero en segundo. Um, La Esquizofrenia is not losing their mass. You know, they just recently switched their character, so I do not expect them to either of them to lose their mass. So it'll be one of the Guerreros Celestiales or one of those Hermanos Asteroth. So yeah, stay tuned. I will be reviewing probably the re- the whole the entirety of Azteca Mania next episode. And, you know, be hyped because, you know, those three matches that I talked about should be great. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. I think this is a good place to end this show. Tensions ran hot, dude. We 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 get some peaks, <laughs> we hit some valleys, but it's a good show. Good show. Again, thank you everyone for listening. We appreciate it so so much. About an hour and forty eight minutes in, we're gonna have to cut it here. Um, again, thank you guys so much. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, anything you want to say, theclublucha at gmail dot com, or just reach out to us on social media. Uh, it may take a while to get a response, but you'll get one eventually. Unless you just, you know, add us, then we'll probably just see it and say something. But again, from us to you, again, thank you so much, and we'll catch you next time. Later. Peace.